sit there and you want to get up and stand up, you can go. So you've, been, you've done a couple already? Yeah. How are they going? Pretty good. Hello, everybody. Um, it's Leah and this is Charles McCarthy. So yes. he has the Spirit and Truth Ministry and he is a real deal prophet. Um, and he's blessed me a, a lot with the words that he's shared from God and it's just been amazing. So um, we are here to pray with you guys and then just as the spirit leads, we're gonna, whatever, we're gonna pray or prophesy or what have you. So. Amen. Praise God. Let's see. So we'll, um, let's see if I can see any of the comments. Um, usually I can, okay. They'll, okay, so no comments yet, but that's okay. Um, so I guess we want to start off with some prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Okay. Um, so dear Heavenly Father, we just lift, we just lift up um, this day to you, God. We dedicate this day to you that you can rule and reign on this day that your will be done that you use um your servants god in whatever capacity um that we are willing please use us god and um we just we dedicate this day so that you can work in greater ways you can work in more miraculous ways god and whatever needs to be prayed for today we just ask that you bring it to our hearts and our minds um, that we can pray and intercede for those things and um, just give us the words that we need to pray over people of your people and um, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Let it be. You know, I just see the Lord um, as soon as, as soon as Leah started to pray, I saw the Lord this this massive halo come over. But it was it was coming over the people of God. It wasn't like one person. And I heard that verse that He will crown them with loving kindness. And I feel like it has to do with redeeming um, situations or even days that that are dark or there's a you know oppressive things happening. Um, but this halo, I don't usually see halos in the spirit, but this halo came over it and it brought um, this this beauty and this light over situations. It was almost like redeeming days that were dark. And I heard the word angel. I don't know if angel's a name, um, you know, so somebody who's going to tune in or what. But I just bless you guys. So, Father, I thank you right now um, that you know how to cover us. You know how to give good gifts to your children, Lord. You don't scrimp. And, Father, you don't give us things, Lord, that... that uh, are imperfect, Father. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights from whom all heaven and earth derives its name. And God, I thank you right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you are redeeming times and situations and seasons for people today, Father. And we just declare right now, Lord, a hedge of protection around the bride of Christ today. And I just see this beautiful white fence and gate. And I thank you, Father, that people today Lord, they're going to they're going to tap into your presence and your spirit in a way that they know that they are covered, that they are surrounded. And, I, and this is going to sound funny, but I see the belt, but I see it as daddy's belt and I see the Lord taking off his belt. But it's to punish the enemies of the people of God. It's to bring a correction, almost a spanking on the enemy. And so, Father, we just give you glory and praise and honor right now, Jesus. I thank you that you are an ever-present help in times of trouble. And I just saw the table as well. And I saw the Lord flip the table. And he said the tables are turning <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. You, Hallelujah. Oh, my gosh. Um, I love that. Okay, so hi, everybody. Um, Megan... Lola, okay. Okay, so we don't have any prayer requests yet, um, but I don't know, what is the spirit leading? I mean, I feel like the like angel, like I've been hearing a lot about angels. Um, I've been like really, I don't know, just kind of getting into it more. Like I know Kat Kerr, I've been talking about Kat Kerr a lot, but she's really kind of opened my eyes to the spirit, the heavenly. Mm -hmm. And I was, she said that you could ask about your angel, like your guardian angel's names. And so, I mean, I, I have. And like, you know, I don't, I think it's pretty personal for you because they're always with you. Right. They're right there next. They know yeah. you so much more than what you think they do. And um, I know that this is a time where we can ask the angels, the heavenly multitudes, the heavenly angels to come and 
war on our behalf, pray on our behalf, um, and we need to utilize them. We need to invite them to pray, invite them to war, because we war not against flesh and blood. We war against the principalities of darkness. Um, so invite them in and let them come and war. Let you them. Know, you know, it's it's interesting because a lot of people don't know this, um, but when you pray in the spirit, when you pray in tongues. A lot of times that will actually cause angels to come to attention and one of the types of tongues is the tongues of angels but um, there are a lot of angelic things that of course we don't pray to angels um, we know that they visit us at times but but we're really supposed to be partnering with them and so we don't seek after angels in the way that we would seek after Holy Spirit but we understand that the Lord has them positioned a lot of times there could be angels of wisdom there's angels of protection um, there's angels that are meant to come and, and, and to be um, like a source of breakthrough and there's there's ones that are like guardians over cities like there's there are um, uh, positions in the spirit like things that they're commissioned to do but a lot of times those things don't get accomplished because we're totally unaware of the fact that they're there to partner with us it's not just they come to give us a message from the Lord like we saw Jesus do you know as the angel of the Lord over and over in the in the Old Testament so uh, you know, some, sometimes people hear the angel talk and they think, um, you know, it's getting weird or spooky or, or charismania, you know, but the fact of the matter is nobody has an issue with the fact that demons are everywhere. You know, nobody has an issue with the fact that there's a hot, you know, hierarchy in the, in the kingdom of darkness. We have principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places, you know, and we have little buzzer bee demons that come and, you know, affect people. Um, and the reality is God has twice as many, right? Because a third fell. And there's twice as many with the Lord. And they're not just up there singing praises all the time. They're on assignment. And so that's the truth about the angelic realm. Oh, I love and that. that's increasing in our day like never before, even as darkness is increasing. I totally agree with that. And I, I've, I've heard a lot of other people, like maybe they're prophets, maybe they're not. But they have been witnessing to that. Like that's in their spirit. That yeah. They're like, there's something about angels. There's something about, we need to learn. We need to call you know invite them to you know the different angels too and i don't really know um, a whole lot about it except you know what you're saying and then what i've read but yeah we need to kind of know their position and like strategically who sh you know who should be here and you know who should go fight that and absolutely that's huge it's yeah. huge knowing your metron and what you're called to and the authority that you're walking in because stepping outside of that might not get you um, you know annihilated but it may it may cause serious serious issues and that's why you know we talk often about John Paul Jackson's book Needless Casualties of War and there's a lot of wisdom and insight in that book um, for how we should approach things in the spiritual realm especially when as it pertains to warfare or intercession so. yeah oh, there, yeah that there's so much wisdom to that uh, we will get into it but let's go ahead and pray there is a prayer request so um, please pray for my husband Glenn, he has um, lost hope, drinking heavily, verbally abusive, physically threatening. Um, sorry, I'm trying to see more. Um, he used to love God, so let's that pray. That person's listening. Can I ask how old Glenn is? I think of uh, 60s. 60s. Yeah. Okay. All right, why don't you go ahead and start. Okay. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just lift up Glenn um, to you, Tressa's husband and first off we just um we praise you for his soul we praise you for his life and that he he has followed you god and um right now we just take power over all the power of the enemy and we loose every single spirit that he may be partnering with god that that or every single wound or scar that the enemy has done to him to make him hurt to make him in pain to start doing these painful things and we just loose him from his body mind and soul right now and we loose that assignment we don't we do not tolerate it and we re remove it from the past the present and the future of their marriage and of um, his life right now and we bind the healing power of yeshua to his body we bind the love that God has. It says, perfect love casts out all fear. So God, we ask that your perfect love be bound to his heart, be bound to his spirit man, 
that it, you said, whatsoever we ask in your name, it shall be given. So we just ask Thank that, you, we ask that right now. Um, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I see a, um, a chess board when we're praying for Glenn. I see a chess board and I see, you know, the, the rooks, the knights, all of that. I'm not a chess player at all, but I see the white back and I see the white ones like kicking the black ones off of the board. And I feel like the Lord is saying that he's, that he's gonna bring an overcoming um, in his life where each of those demonic spirits that are coming to try to bring oppression or hold him in, in that place where it's like his mind has stopped. It's like there's a gear that was working before and it needs oil or something and to begin to move again. And it's almost like shut down part of his understanding or his reasoning um, of the things of God. But in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, we speak to that gear. We speak to that place, Father, that's that Jesus. neural pathway, if that's what it is. In the name of Jesus, we release breakthrough over this man of God. I thank you, Father, right now that, Lord, uh, his flesh is going to decrease and the spirit of God within him and his own spirit is going to increase. And I thank you, Father, that the enemy is going to begin to be eliminated, Lord. That he's going to be booted off of that chessboard yes, of my brother's yes. life, Father. Yes. We surround him right now with your protection and your power. And I thank you, Lord, for causing him to hear your voice, Lord, in a way that it's like there's part of his heart that the Lord hasn't been able to reach. It's like, like almost out of hearing. And Father, I thank you right now for calling him back into the place where he yes. can be steadfast and he can make a, uh, decisions, Lord, that are decisions. I plead the blood of Jesus over this household, Father. Yes. And I ask, Lord, that you'd cleanse them, Lord, from the, the uh, aftermath, Father, of 2020 and the different things that have been going on in the world this past year, Father. I just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, right now, you remove the wreckage, Father, and the carnage. And I thank you, Lord, for causing the spirit to rise again in them in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. You, that Father. was awesome. Oh, Thank you, Father. Love it. I'm on fire. <laughs> um, okay, I would like prayer for my son. He came forward in November about a drug addiction that he has been battling for the past nine years. He says he's been clean since Christmas, but he is surrounded daily by his friends and is finding it hard to stay away. Kyler has two little girls and a girlfriend, um, they are preparing to move out of the state soon to get away from his temptations. There is so much more to the story. I know God is working and received a word that the battle has been won. This mama is uneasy. Thank you. Okay, well, um, so we just lift up Kyler. We lift up uh, Michelle right now to you, God. And... And we, and we also lift up those who are struggling with the same things. Yes. These mamas that have their sons that, are, that have gotten into partnership with addiction uh, for, for all the pain that's been happening in their lives um, or what have you. But um, you, I just, we just right now stand in the gap for these Thank mamas. You, and God, you are a God of redemption. And we know that you can redeem every single life. You can redeem every single addiction right now. And uh, yes, we plead the blood of Jesus over their, their minds right now. And every bodily addiction um, to drugs, to alcohol, we, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we take power over all the power of the enemy that has assignments on their life. We, we deny the assignment. We cut off any jurisdiction that the, that the enemy has on their life to get into with this addiction, any hurt, any pain. Um, we just, we seal it, God, with your blood, with your love, and with the oil, God, that comes from you. And we seal it and just, just let your anointing come over them, God, right now. Let them be redeemed. And um, in the mighty name of Jesus, and here's Rex. He's going to pray too. <laughs> and we just, we loose it, God. We loose the addiction. We do not tolerate it. We roll and reign with you, God. And you said um, you are faithful to all your promises. And you're loving towards all you have made. You've made us, God. And you will never forsake us. And you have plans for our future, God. And I just want to speak wholeness over um, mentally and over the, the brains, uh, mental health of, um, of these people that we're talking about, the, the, both the people who are addicted in the families, but specifically the people who are battling these addictions. 
Um, and I just, I speak a healing, a release healing right now. And you just, if you, I'm praying for you, just reach out your hand. Obviously we can't see it, but reach out and receive like we're praying for you in person. I just speak healing right now and restoration in the name of Jesus over brain chemistry issues. Um, and I see things that, um, I see things that are connected to, um, to previous family health, whether you want to call it generational curses or, or whatever, but it's almost like a training of the brain to go in a certain direction. And Father, today we cut the cord right now. We cut yes, the cord God. in the name of Jesus, yes. Father God, that that thing that has been leading um, these people around like a dog on a leash, not knowing any better, Father, we cut that leash today and we just declare a healing and a reset, Father, at the cellular and molecular level of those people in their brains, Father, that their brains are not automatically going to turn to the right or the left based on uh, the stimulus anymore, Father. And we declare in the name of Jesus yes. right now, enough is enough, Father. We put up a roadblock. Yes. It's, we've had so much of the enemy putting up roadblocks for the body of Christ in the last year. We're declaring a roadblock for the enemy, that the enemy cannot pass that line of demarcation anymore yes. and father i thank you right now and i speak to that to the one who who posted that prayer request i speak in jesus name to the hope level in your heart the bible says that the hope that god gives us does not disappoint and i speak hope to you that you are not going to give up or stop pushing ahead i, I just cancel the assignment of worry which is meditating on the lies of the enemy and I cancel every distraction in the name of Jesus right now. And I speak life to you. Yes. And I thank you, Father, right now that you are going to give overcoming dunamis power, Father, to this woman of God. Yes. To this woman of God in the name of Jesus, Lord, yes, that you are going Jesus. to rise up inside of her, Father. And I see you rising to the top. I just saw a wheel and you were standing on the bottom of the wheel. But the Lord brought you upright again. And I thank you, Father, that the finished work... Lord, the finished work of the cross and the finished work in her life, Lord, that is what's going to rise to the top. And I thank you that that's what wins out in Jesus name. Yes. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Father. On fire still. <laughs> um, okay. So, oh yes. Um, let's see. Let me go. Dee, dee, dee. Um, okay. So pray that my strength comes back from having COVID mid-February has come back a little bit, but really um, gets fatigue. I really get fatigued through the day. Haven't quite got my um, taste and smell back. Okay. Um, and I know a lot of people are um, dealing with COVID and just crazy things. Um, my cousin, she was hospitalized for COVID. Um, so we just really need to just keep on praying against it. Um, so dear Heavenly Father, we just lift up Thank COVID Jesus. right now and we break it. We Thank break Jesus. it before your throne because it has no authority. And we just, no, we, we do not tolerate it. We take power over all the power of the enemy. We take power over all this COVID yes, and Jesus. disease. You, God, yes, you sent Jesus. your son and he got the keys to overcome yes. death and disease and COVID even. And so... Uh, we roll and reign with your son, and we rebuke, we totally annihilate it. We, uh, we do not tolerate COVID any longer at this point moving forward, God. We, we loose it from their bodies, God. Just loose it, loose it, loose it. We bind the healing power of Yeshua to them, God. And just totally eradicate it right now. We don't, we don't tolerate it, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your blood flow over them and cleanse them, God. And let... Let them have taste and smell and um, let them have the energy, God, and let any hospitalizations come to a close and be discharged, God, with, with a full completeness of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said our faith has made us whole. So we speak our faith right now, God. Yeah, I see the Lord put something that looks almost like a nicotine patch um, on your arm. And it's... it's uh, it's something that I feel like the Lord is going to allow you. The Bible says that some were healed as they went. And, and of course, we know that, that many are healed immediately and, and some aren't. But 
but there are some who are healed in process. And I see the Lord with, with um, almost like when you sit in the sun and you absorb and absorb and then your body, you know, the uh, vitamin D is activated and your body is able to absorb that better. And then eventually you tan or burn or whatever, but there's a reaction because of what you're absorbing. And I see this, the Lord right now, just releasing this healing patch on your arm. And I thank you, Father, yes, um, that she is going to begin receiving, Father, if, I don't know if that was a woman or a man actually, woman. but gonna begin receiving um, healing treatments, Father, directly from the throne. And I thank you for an infusion right now of life, Father. I thank you for a supernatural IV, Lord. And I just speak to any fear or anxiety about a resurgence or about um, about this, this thing like taking them back out, Father. And I just declare in the name of Jesus right now, Father, that they are going forward, Lord, that they are moving ahead. They are moving ahead. And Father, anything that's come to try to be a chain or try to chain them to this. I see you pulling like this stone behind you with this chain attached to it. And that's what it feels like right now. But Lord, I thank you for removing in the name of Jesus with your angels right now. I thank you for removing those chains and those things, Father, that have, have had that weight attached. Lord, we annihilate them right now. By the word of truth, I thank you that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came in the flesh, supersedes the name of every other thing that can be named in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for causing those chains to shrivel right now. I speak peace. I speak healing over your back as well right now. I speak healing right now over any trauma in your body. I cancel the assignment of trauma in Jesus' name. God's doing something there right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's almost like an enough is enough thing where you turn and you speak. You speak behind you to what's pulling, what's yes, dragging Jesus. behind you. And, and you let it know that you have a voice. And that voice says, you know, that I have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing can by any means harm me. So God, right now, we thank you, Jesus, for supernatural strength, Lord, that patch, that healing, that infusion of life, God. And I thank you, Father, for, um, for restoring order. Yes, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. And as Lux would say, we break every chain. <laughs> we break it. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Father. Um, okay, so we have another one. It says, um, I have a brother-in-law and sister-in-law in Michigan who did not know Jesus and don't want him. Please pray for their salvation right now. Okay. Um, yeah, so... You know, we can stand in the gap for our family. So I just ask that you pray with us, um, Tam. Um, just pray with us. And and it says, we're two or more gathered in my name. There I am also. And he says in his word, he's faithful to all his promises. Whatever we ask in his name and believe, it shall be given. So with those promises, um, we're just going to pray right now. So please pray with us. God, we just, we together stand in the gap for these this brother-in-law and sister-in-law, God, their salvation. I just ask that a mighty, godly encounter come down upon them right now in the name of Jesus. That they can't even they can't even look. God, I ask that you give them an encounter as big as as Paul or Saul, God, in Acts, where they. They cannot deny you are there. They cannot deny that you exist. They cannot deny that your son came. We speak this encounter to happen right now. We prophesy that it's going to happen right now. That they will come to know God and they will come to know Jesus and they will have salvation because we stood in the gap for them and we have interceded on their behalf and we're calling it into existence as it, as it is, not as, it sh as it's not. We're not, we don't receive that they don't know Jesus. We speak that they know Jesus right now. And we just ask that, um, just let the light and let that encounter just totally blow them away. Just move, God, move, move, move. We ask that you come, come into their lives and just <laughs> drop the scales off. Drop the scales off of their eyes right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I see, uh, I think it was Pam, I see a Christmas tree. And I saw Jesus standing next to the Christmas tree and there were gifts underneath, but there were two particular gifts. And then the only thing I saw was one of those gift boxes open, the top of it open, and there were new shoes in there. And they were, they were black with white soles, um, like slip on very, very, very comfortable shoes, almost like a light, light, light type of sneakers. 
And, and I felt like the Lord was saying um, the shoes of the gospel of peace. <laughs> and I feel like the way um, to the hearts of these people, because we know the Bible says that the enemy has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the truth or the light of the gospel. And so what we do when we have people who are stubborn or situations that are stubborn is we represent Jesus well to them, um, especially his love. But we, um, we do warfare in the area of removing those blinders. And so that they're able to see the light. And so that's what we seek the Lord for and we declare and decree on their behalf. Yes. But I feel like God is going to open a door for you for them to respond in a healthy way to the gospel yes, through gift giving. And I feel like there are some things that the Lord is going to have you give. It may even be that time of year. I don't know. But I feel like I feel like there's going to be um, an opening in their soul. Um, to receive through a gift, not necessarily through a conversation. And so, Father, we pray right now, Lord, that those gifts sent ahead, Father, that prepare the way and open the door, because the Bible says that, that the gift makes room for you, and it, it ushers the giver into the presence of the great. It can usher the giver anywhere. And so, Father, I pray that the giving, Lord, of, of um, whatever it is that you're going to put on Pam's heart to release to them, Father, is going to open the door for them to see clearly. And God, we just declare that over them right now in Jesus' name. We declare it over them, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And Pam, I don't know what this is, but I also see a car for you. And I don't know if that is a new car or if it's ministry related, because cars in the spirit mean both things. Um, but I saw red and I saw blue. Um, and they were older style cars, which was funny. But I just declare over you too, in the name of Jesus, that there's no discouragement, that there's no partnering with what's not happening. Instead, there's a moving forward with all of God has called you to invest in the kingdom. In Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Yes, thank you. That is awesome. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, we just have, um, this is from Patrice. This was, uh, Patrice was one of, I think I told you about Patrice, that she was one of my mom's um, inter interceders. They would have intercession at Open Door on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, she, she says, such as I have received, freely I give. What we have overcome, we have the power to overcome. I lift up Lola and bind the spirit of infirmity and send it to the feet of Jesus. I cover Lola with the blood of Jesus and ask for a restoration of everything lost. Yes. And that she, um, she was the one who requested the healing of COVID and you said something about her back. So that's awesome. Praise God. Sweet. Thank you, Father. I think that's, a, I think that's about it. Let me see. And, oh, another one. Um, uh, the uh, trust of the one about the Glenn's hu Glenn husband um, also have arm surgery scheduled for next Thursday. Okay, so you actually so we prayed that she would um, we prayed for healing and we also prayed that she would be able to have her surgery so she's able to have her surgery now. So, amen. Yeah. So we just declare healing right now in the name of Jesus that um, you won't even need surgery, but if you do have it, that everything will go well. Uh, we just pray that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And let's see. I, you know, like today, I was just um, actually. I do want to. I want to have a, like a little praise report, um, or I don't know whatever you call it. But um, yesterday, I was just really sad, and I, I was asking God. I was like, God, just let me let me see my mom and Lux's face, like. Let me see them in their glory. Like, let me see them all happy. And I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if he'll ever let me see that. But um, I was just asking for it. And um, and then my brother came over yesterday. And, um, you know, it really, I didn't get to spend too much time with him. But, you know, I was like, hey, if you know my mom's pen to her phone, you know, I have the phone. I just don't have the pen. Um, I can't really remember it. And. Um, anyway, so he dug through his messages and he couldn't find it. And then literally around, I think it was eight or nine o'clock, he found the pen. And so, um, the, so I got the phone back and I was able to open the phone and see, 
some of their last messages and said that that was an answer to prayer. Yeah. You know, I got That's to beautiful. I got to like see them. I got to see um, you know some videos that I hadn't seen before, and um, you know, and it's just we just can't ever take people for granted because you know even my daughter. I mean, <clears throat> she. She was just such of heaven. Like, she, she just, um, you know, she, one of her last messages, it was uh, December 30th, and I'll, I'll post it for you guys to see, but um, she was talking about how she just didn't want to live on this island anymore. <laughs> and I think she was talking about Earth being the <laughs> island. <laughs> and she was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this. People are dumb. They like <laughs> dumb things. And... My mom was like, what do you mean dumb? She's like, things that don't matter. Like, your children matter, but, you know, other things don't. And so she was such a prophet. I mean, she knew. Like, to, in my opinion, my, my daughter knew she only had a small time on the earth. And I don't know how a child comprehends it, but she somehow did. And, um, you know, she she was always speaking prophetic things it was just did we have the ears to hear like did we could we receive it could we really understand what she was saying and um i mean literally like in this video she talks about the wreck and like her leave i mean not in those direct terms but she said that the um the war dove angel <laughs> took her would take her hand and take her up into the sky the hole in the sky my mom was like, what's the hole in the sky? And she goes, heaven. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so, you know, it's amazing that she, she knew that. Like God, God created her for this short little time in heaven or on earth, but he had a greater calling in heaven. And your callings don't, don't stop. Like just because you die or your, lo or your loved ones die doesn't mean their calling ever stops. God has other things planned. And, you know, he does have plans to prosper us and not to harm us. I mean, why would he say, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you? Because we're going to go through really bad things. And he doesn't want us to blame him. He wants us to find the good. He wants us to find the silver lining out of really bad situations. Um, and so I just encourage everybody to, you know, not take people for granted, listen to what they're saying, if they're hurting, or if they have some weird, crazy dream, or if they are saying something that doesn't make sense, try to under, try to listen, try to hear it. Um, and, and, you know, and just find the silver lining in every single thing that happens to you, because that's a testimony of God. It's a testimony of overcoming um, and that's what God's called us to do is overcome. You know, also, there's something to be said for mantles. And there there are tragedies where the enemy, you know, sometimes releases a strike. Of course, we know the enemy can't do anything against us um, that God doesn't give him permission to. But the reality is sometimes the Lord takes these things. Unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, right? It doesn't produce something. And but that doesn't mean that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the enemy, that the enemy wasn't involved in something. But just because someone is is taken prematurely by a tragedy, you know, an accident or something else doesn't mean that their work has to go unfinished. And I, I heard an amazing testimony. I won't go into it right now because it's not mine and it would it would take a long time. Um, but it was it was one of the most amazing testimonies I have ever heard about how God communicated this truth. And it was involved Sean Bowles and some others in a service that was happening somewhere several years ago. And God, you know, this may, I'll just tell you like bullet points. This this man who's a mighty man of God um, in the U.S., a pastor. Um, he was in high school. God told him to talk to this kid. He didn't talk to him, told him all day. He couldn't even do his schoolwork. He was so, so like, so busy feeling freaked out that he was supposed to talk to this kid about the Lord. Lunchtime, everybody goes to lunch. The, the kid's car comes up in front of him. It's never happened before. And he realizes it's this kid. And he still walks around the car and goes. And he comes back from lunch. And the kid died in a car accident on lunch. And for eight years or something like that, or nine years, he carried that weight and felt like it was his responsibility that this kid had died. Then Sean Bowles comes to his church 
and he's ministering about this very thing, the cloud of witnesses in this room in heaven where God is saying, who will take up the mantle? Who will take up the mantle? Who will take up the mantle? And there was all of these people there who had been taken out prematurely, but their mantles were still up for grabs, so to speak. Not for personal gain of those who would grab them, but for people who would say, I will, you know, here am I, send me. Who will go for me, the Lord said, right? And so um, he, he went into this encounter with the Lord and um, he tells the story, it's a lot longer, 20 or 30 minutes long, but he went into this encounter with the Lord on the floor and he could see the room and he saw this kid from his past and, and he felt like the Lord was asking him to take the mantle. And so he said, I'll take the mantle. And everyone in the room was in an incredibly deep place with the Lord. It was one of the most powerful meetings he had ever, ever experienced. And he said that when he came to, when he came out of that place and the service was over, a woman walked up to him and she said, I just had to tell you that um, you were in school with my son, Zach, the same kid. This is eight years later, the same night that the Lord asked him to take up this mantle of this kid that died and to put down the burden of, of feeling like he was responsible. She said, I can't explain it, but God told me I had to be here tonight and I had to come and talk to you and just tell you how much I feel like you're a spiritual son to me and that God is going to allow you to fulfill Zach's calling. Like this came together like, like you couldn't script it. Disney couldn't make a movie better than that, right? And, and it's, it's so powerful and it's a truth that like when someone goes on, the Elishas are there to pick up the Elijah mantles. And you notice that even the greatest man of God on earth, who was Elijah, you know, told Elisha not to follow him. The other prophets said, don't follow him. He had opportunity after opportunity to stop and not go further, but he decided to listen to the Lord or listen to um, you know, the voice in his own spirit, I need to move forward, even though everybody's telling me not to move forward. And in the end, he gets the double portion and immediately the spirit of God rests upon Elijah or Elisha, I'm sorry. And then immediately the river parts again, right? And the, the prophets immediately recognize the spirit of Elijah. It doesn't say the spirit of God. The spirit of Elijah is resting on the spirit of Elisha. And what that meant was Elisha was going to fulfill what Elijah couldn't or didn't because God took him home because of all those events that had happened beforehand. So I want to encourage you, if you lost somebody prematurely or a situation died, um, that the Lord will bring that thing back to life. It's like a plant that died and then you you cut the, you know, the plants or the trees out of the ground, you throw them in the woods and the next spring you come back and even though they're not in the ground, all of a sudden they're sprouting again. You know, there is life in what has died. Yes. I prophesy that to you today in oh, Jesus' yes. name. Yes, Amen. Oh, that is so good. That is ugh. That is such a redemption thing and like a redemption story. And that's God's love. It says God's grace for His people. Amen. He loves us so much. Like He loves us more than Amen. anybody on earth could love us. The most love that we ever had experienced. He loves us more than that. And oh, that's just amazing. Like. Yeah, and we, you know, and, um, you know, I just encourage you guys to, if there's something, you know, that you feel called to do, just do it. Or if you feel called to take up a mantle, take it up. Um, I mean, but be warned that the mantle comes with a lot of responsibility. I mean, you know, you know, maybe God's telling you to get on your face two hours every day. Maybe God's telling you to, you know, do things that are very uncomfortable. Um, so there's, yes, it's great. Sometimes it comes with great power, but it comes with great sacrifice too. It'll cost you everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything <laughs> to step into that place. There's nobody operating. There's a lot of people operating in gifting of different kinds that they may be very gifted, but anointing is different than gifting and, and power and authority don't come from gifting. Like it's a... It, it's separate yes. <laughs> and every season of obedience you come through laying things down and uh, being willing to endure you know the wilderness or the fire um, despite the opposition it will come with an increase of authority and power you will come out of the wilderness with power um, John came out with power and purpose and Jesus came out with power right after 40 days You'll come out with power and purpose, but you're also going to be opening your your emotional, spiritual, physical checkbook a lot uh, <laughs> yeah. because it's going to cost every last thing you have 
to really reach the destiny that God has called you into. Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen because for three years you did great. Um, it is a process that continues and continues. It's like kneading dough. You ever watch somebody knead pizza dough and it's like, man, are they ever going to be finished? You know, and they're just throwing it and doing all the stuff they're doing. Um, God, God, it takes them a long time to get all of us out of us. First, it's our flesh, you know, um, and then it's the, the flesh aspect of what we think that we're called to do or our interpretation of what God has spoken over our lives and trying to make that happen in our own strength. And so there are different wildernesses for different reasons. But at the end of the day, the purposes of, of God are that Jesus himself, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Nevertheless, not I that live, it's Christ who lives in me. And when we get to that place with the Lord where there's none of us left, that's when Jesus can just function as Jesus in us. And it's a process, but it's worth it because if someone doesn't pay the price, many, many, many people are not going to have the breakthrough that they would have had that they needed to get to that place. Oh, yeah, that is so true. Yeah. Um, you can't, it's all, everything's built on each other, you know. Um, if you step out in faith, you step out. You know, and what if God's telling you to lay down everything and, and you do, then that starts an effect. You know, you change that person, you change that person, then you're changed. Amen. You get authority, you know, and yeah. um, it will open the door yeah. wide for the next generation. Every yes. time, every yes. time someone's obedient, it's easier for the next one. But there's an increase on the next one as well. David Hogan is probably one of the most recognized great apostolic men of God in the world today. He's a little goofy and some people don't like him because his personality is pretty crazy, but um, he says things people don't like. But over 600 people reported raised from the dead through his ministry wow. or through the ministries that are under his ministry over the last, you know, several decades. And, uh, you know, he, he got there, you know, as an eighth generation minister who first walked away from the Lord because he saw so much hypocrisy in the first seven and what he saw in the church around him. And he said, I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fill a seat or be a hireling or just talk religion and have no power. I'm going to go after what the Bible says I can have and should have as a minister of the gospel. And David Hogan went out and, and basically, you know, just became a rebel for the Lord, not a rebel, you know, for the, for the kingdom of darkness, although he could have, and he determined he was going to walk in that thing. And that's why he gets to walk in glorious testimonies that bring faith and hope and encouragement to the hearts of people who would give up without those testimonies, right? It's because he went after it. You know, I just encourage you guys today to go after it. Don't, don't just be sheep following, but be leaders. You know, get out in the front and begin leading, even if you don't know where you're going. Another thing he says is there is no stop sign. He's talking about people who are like, oh, I haven't seen it, you know, the green light yet, or God hasn't said go in this area or not. And, there, and there's times when there's absolutely wisdom and waiting on the Lord. That's the way I have to live my life in my prophetic ministry. But he says, there is no stop sign. There's only go, boy. And I was at a meeting one time when he yelled that. And it was, it was so powerful because, you know, that's the whole, you know, great commission in a nutshell. Go, right? Yes. Go. Yes, go. And so I encourage you guys to, to pick up those things and go. Yes, yes. Get up. Go. Go forward. Do not stop. That's the enemy saying stop. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, let me see up Um, okay, a major move for my son and daughter-in-law to Tulsa helped him to find a job in Tulsa, and their move goes smoothly. In Jesus' name, I pray. So just relocation, relocation and job opportunities. Okay, so we we pray um, for uh, Penny's son and daughter, daughter-in-law, and we pray. Anyone that is listening or that you know that is having, uh, is relocating or is needing a job, please, this also is for you, so pray along with us. Um, God, we just lift them up to you, God. We ask for safe passage and safe moving um, to Tulsa, the safe relocation. We ask that um, no breakables, no heirlooms, nothing is broken. Uh, the whole thing is completely moved uh, in complete manner and wholeness. 
Uh, we ask that everything goes smooth, God, for them. We ask that you show up in the midst of their moving and comfort them if they need comfort, God. Um, and we just open the doors to uh, finan financial opportunities. We open the doors to job opportunities, God. You know the plans you have for us. You know the jobs that we want and desire. So I ask that you provide a job opportunity or a financial opportunity for this family that is every single thing that they want. Like you know the desires of our heart. So God, I just ask that you give it to them. I ask that you make it abundantly clear that it is you that is giving it to them and no one else, not based on merit or anything like that. It is God. And I want... God, I just want you to show up in a crazy faith building, faith capacity increasing way, God, to this family and let them know that it is you that is doing this, God. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't know why I saw this. I've never seen this before, but I saw the, the Statue of Liberty alive like a mother and I saw her rocking a baby. And I have no idea what that means, but this is one of those moments when you, you take prophetic risks and you say what, if, what you see or what you hear, whether it makes any sense to you or not. Um, and I saw there was a nurturing. There was a nurturing. And of course, we know the Statue of Liberty um, represents freedom or liberty. Um, and, and it represents a nation, but it's also, um, you know, it represents liberty where it's not related to maybe necessarily the U.S. specifically, but more an individual. And so, Father, I just speak right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, uh, um, this this um, family dynamic, the move. I don't know if they're moving from you, Penny, or or what that that um, you know the logistics of all of that look like. But I just thank you, Father, right now, Lord, for filling every empty place, every empty place within Penny, within them, Lord. Anything to do with um, apprehension or uh, any. Anything with loneliness, Father, I just speak over them in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that their cups are going to be full. Their cups are going to be full, Father. I speak a smooth transition. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are clearing the waters. I see waters that are becoming clear. Um, and I thank you, Father, that they're going to be able to see and they're going to know their next step before they, they land on the mainland. I'm seeing the waters and I'm seeing an island like with sand. And it's like trying to determine where the best place to, um, to, to emerge from the waters and, and situate or whatever is. God, I pray in Jesus' name right now, Lord, that you would cause them to meet the natives of the mainland quickly. Father, that when they arrive, Lord, that there would be um, a, a supernatural um, connection that is born almost immediately, Father. Father, I speak peace in Jesus' name. I don't know, I also see a fire on that beach, and I think of Jesus cooking the fish when the disciples came in from fishing at the end after, um, after everything had happened. And Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, that you are going to meet them in a way that they don't expect that is powerful, Father, when they arrive. And God, we just seal that right now yes. in the oil of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I thank you, Father, that the enemy's not going to be able to steal from them when they get there, Father. He's not going to be able to steal the blessing. Yes. I just declare over them that there's a protection over the blessing that you have waiting for them in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Amen. Okay, so I think that's kind of, we're going to wrap it up unless um, you have anything else. No, I'm pretty good. Okay, sweet. All right, well, um, so we just... We're gonna go ahead and close this and then we'll have more um, throughout the week and we'll, um, or the weeks to follow and we will let you guys know. But um, we just wanna thank you for joining us in prayer. We wanna thank you for watching. Thank you, um, thank you for standing in the gap for um, everyone because we are all God's people and we all um, deserve redemption at some point. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we just speak blessings and peace and God on your life today, right now. And, and yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thanks guys. Bye.